faith. What are you doing? We have a show right now. Jillian, I'm calling Urban Meyer. I've been trying to reach him since December. <gasps> Come on, we need to get started right now. Uh, voicemail again. Sports scene starts, starts now. Welcome to the first sports scene of fall 2019. I'm Jillian Carroll. And I'm Faith Bonds. USC is coming into this weekend with a lot to prove. The team is facing off against number 10 Utah on Friday at the Coliseum. After a disappointing loss to BYU last week, Trojan fans will be hungry for a Utah victory to keep their hopes of a winning season alive. The Utes are 3-0 on the season, coming off of a 31-0 win over Idaho State last Saturday. Their offense, led by senior quarterback Tyler Huntley, has been a fierce presence that rarely makes mistakes. USC's defense has been struggling, especially without senior defensive lineman Christian Rector. A strong secondary and better play calling will be the name of the game for the Trojans. Jillian, how about we bring in a few guests to talk about USC football? Absolutely. Today we are joined by Tyler Meyerly and Daniel Hun. You guys ready to talk some football? We're ready. Let's 100%. do this. All right, let's get started. So there's been a lot of talk about this new culture of USC football. Some people are saying it may have been tested by that game at BYU. Do you guys think it was, or do you think they can overcome it and continue on for the rest of the season? Jillian, we have to remember it was only one game. And plus, they came into a hostile crowd on a Saturday afternoon. I think they handled it. The team handled it exceptionally well, and they only lost, it, lost by three. It's only one game. I think the culture of this team is that everything is for the good of this team. I think that BYU game might have been the only thing that could have tested it, but they just have to remember it was no one player's fault, so they can't really throw anybody under the bus. They just have to keep that team mentality. I think Trojan Nation is super strong. This is just one loss. The team's coming back to the Coliseum this week. I think the crowd's going to be fired up, and this is going to be a really great game. Awesome. Love to hear that. Let's move on to question two. So we know everyone is a fan of Keaton, but who do you think is the most underrated offensive player through week three? I'm going to go with wide receiver Tyler Vaughns. Everyone has been hooked on Ke Keaton Slovis when talking about the offense, but we got to remember Tyler Vaughns has put up multiple 100-yard games. I think Tyler Vaughns doesn't really get the credit he deserves. I think we know who our stars are at the wideout position. We've seen our stars in the running game. But I think one player that really stuck out to me this game uh, was Marquise Stepp. I think, you know, he really played a key role uh, after the first quarter. And I think he put up great numbers late in the game. I think we can expect to see a lot more of him late in the season. And Jillian, you know, the, I'm the queen of hot takes. So I'm going to go with Matt Fink. I think right. he's there. He's ready for us. If anything happens to Keaton, if he falls behind, Matt is going to step up and put up a consistent performance. Well, if there's any trend in the world of football, hopefully nothing happens to Keaton. But it is a bad time to be a football quarterback right now. So mm. let's hope that doesn't happen to Keaton. Definitely. Yes, absolutely. All right, let's head on to our last question. We've got Utah on Friday. Can we do it? I think there's a lot to learn uh, from that BYU game. I think this team has taken good lessons from it. Uh, we're coming in. We're fired up. I think we're going to pull out this one Friday night. I don't think it's going to be an easy matchup. I think the only thing working in our favor is that it's a home game. This is going to be the closest thing SC gets to see to a Pac-12 conference championship. They need to execute on defense to contain that Utah offense. I agree with Tyler, and it's going to be a Friday night. Something weird always happens on Friday night, and I can definitely see some strange thing coming over where USC can pull out an upset at home at the Coliseum. Stranger things have happened. All right, that's going to wrap up our discussion. Let's send it over to our own Lauren LaBruna with this week's installment of Ask an Athlete. Hi, I'm Lauren Labruna with Anberg Media. I'm here with Christian Rector, and we're going to do another segment of Ask an Athlete. So I'm going to ask you as many questions as possible in 60 seconds. Are you ready? Ready. All right, let's go. What's the best part of football season so far? Um, competing with my boys after all the hard work that we put in through like, the summer. What's your favorite pregame meal? Um, pasta and chicken. Yum. Who's your celebrity crush? Uh, Selena Gomez. What's your go-to pump-up song? Uh, Hot by Young Thug and Gunna. Shake Shack or In-N-Out? In-N-Out. Easy. <laughs> I also think the same. Um, who's your role model? Um, my uncle and my mom. Who's your funniest teammate? Funniest teammate? CJ Pollard. What's your favorite sports memory? 
Um, probably the Texas game, 2017. Fun game. If you could play in any stadium, where would it be? Um, Coliseum. Love that answer. Fight on. What motivates you? Um, what motivates me? God. Love that. Faithful man. Well, thanks for joining us. We're so excited to see what you do against Utah this weekend. Thanks, Lauren. It was an eventful summer for the men's tennis team as they graduated five players this past spring. The biggest shock, however, was when five-time national championship winning head coach Peter Smith resigned after 17 years at the helm. New head coach Brett Misa was a former assistant coach here at USC and most recently coached at Texas Tech. With all these offseason changes, expect the team to look very different this year. The doubles lineup will experience the most changes after it lost three players. You can expect Brandon Holt and Riley Smith to continue as the top pairing this season. At number two, look for junior Daniel Kukerman to pair up with sophomore Bradley Fry. And at the bottom of the lineup, it should be the freshman tandem of Stefan Dostanich and Ryder Jackson. In singles, the lineup will look mostly the same as you can see as last year with a few tweaks. Kukerman and Holt will remain the top two positions in the lineup. Expect freshman Stefan Dostanich to fill in at the number three spot. In my projected lineup, I have sophomores Moore Bullis and Jake Sands at four and five with Riley Smith playing six. However, all three of these players are about the same level and you can see them switching positions based on whoever has the hot hand during the season. All these changes, however, did not reduce the expectations on this team. After speaking to a lot of people in the Pac-12, many believe this could be one of the strongest teams USC has fielded, and they expect them to challenge for a national title this season. That's all I have this week for tennis. Let's now send it over to Faith with his studio in guest. So you're a senior this year. You've played a lot of soccer in your life. <laughs> Have you ever been a part of a team so special as this 2019 team? I mean, this team is super special. I am so excited for this year. I mean, we've started off strong. We've worked together to build up to this point. We have goals every year and we build off of those goals. So I'm really excited about this season because we've been working and preparing a lot for this coming, these coming games in this season. And I think that's definitely easy to see. You guys are 7-0, and <laughs> undefeated. This season has all the makings of a historic season. So what are the team's goals? We make sure that while there's so much noise going on around us and there's a lot of outside factors, we just want to make sure that everything that we're doing within the team is our main priority to make sure that we can get as far as we can this year. <laughs> and so you go to college, you start at Notre Dame, and then take a season off. Yep. <laughs> to play uh, with the U.S. U-20 national team at the World Cup. So what was that like? I mean, not many people can say that they've done something like that. Uh, so what was that experience? Yeah, that was amazing. And playing with them, it just, at that level and stuff, is just very helpful in every way. I mean, I learned so much. I met a lot of cool people from all over the country and different teams. So that was just an amazing experience. I'm really glad I did that. And then you come back play at Notre Dame for a year, and then transfer to USC. <laughs> so what kind of influenced that decision to become a Trojan, play for USC? Yeah, a lot was happening within all of that time span right there. But I came back to Notre Dame. I love Notre Dame. I'm so glad mm -hmm. I was there. I got to do two years at both, so I kind of split it in half. I was looking forward to playing with this group of people, with Kadani. I heard he was an amazing coach before I got here. Um, so I wanted to try and play here and see what happened here and I'm it was a great decision to come and to play um, with one of the best teams in the country. We are always at the game seeing you guys dancing on the sidelines. <laughs> there seems to be a camaraderie that's really yeah. special uh, on this team so how would you describe that team atmosphere? Yeah it's a different feeling than I feel like we've had or at least I've had before. It's very Focus, like I said before, but relaxed at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think what's cool about this team is everyone gets along, everyone has a voice, everyone has a part in this team. With this team, it's just like we just know what we're going to do. We're going to figure it out, and it's kind of like everyone stay calm. We know what we're doing. We stick to the game plan. So I feel like that helps a lot with off the field. We're very close, so on the field, it's just kind of like we'll figure it out together. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Natalie. You can catch the USC women's soccer team at Baylor at 4 p.m. this Friday. Thank you. Thank you. 
the number 20 USC women's volleyball team swept the Villanova Wildcats, winning the Trojan Invitational Series in three straight sets. The Trojans hosted Yale, Howard, and Villanova at the Galen Center this past weekend for a round-robin tournament. Underclassmen dominated the court with four freshmen on the lineup due to injuries sidelining veteran players. Uh, well, I'm really excited that uh, Amelia and Kaylin and Maddie are getting, I mean, we were starting three freshmen. We had four freshmen out on the court at one point tonight. Um, for them to get experience like this is great. Um, they're getting better each match. Uh, Kaylin was pretty spectacular tonight. She was the best player on the floor for either team, and it was great to see her kind of break out like that. Freshman outside hitter Kaylin O's was named Pac-12 Freshman of the Week on Monday for her impressive performance. O's led the Trojan offense with 44 kills and earned her first career double-double with 28 digs. Bringing home a second Pac-12 honor for the Trojans is senior middle blocker Jasmine Gross. She led the tournament with nearly one and a half blocks per set, racking up a total of 16 blocks and 32 kills. The Trojans will head south this weekend, concluding their non-conference schedule at the USD Invitational. USC will face San Diego Thursday and cap off the weekend with a match against Long Beach State on Friday. On the heels of a winning weekend, rest and recovery will be the name of the game this week for the women of Troy. Watch their match against the San Diego Toreros live on the WCC Network at 7 p.m. this Friday. Thank you, Cambry. Well, you know, we here at Annenberg Media love our social media. Oh, yeah. So Jillian and I came up with some hashtags to preview our Utah game coming up this Friday. So Jillian, what did you put as your hashtag? What, are, what should the team keep in mind this weekend? All right, so my hashtag is run the scene. This is the motto from the USC football Instagram page. I love the energy of that page. I love the happiness that I see. And that's the biggest thing I want them to remember going into this game. Love yourself, love your teammates. It's going to be awesome. Love it. Well, I put the team's motto, so what, now what? The team has been like a broken record with this. Every time, after every game, whether they win or lose, they're saying this. So I think they need to keep this in mind in order to bring the record back up to 3-1. and one. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Sports Scene. I'm Faith Bonds. And I'm Jillian Carroll. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Annenberg Media Sports. See you next week for our next episode of the semester.